Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax. And today is officially the start of my RV build series. Now, if you haven't seen the video I posted a while back with over the 100 modifications I've done to this RV, you're gonna wanna check those out before watching this video because these videos are gonna go into detail about how I did specific mods. So check out that video, come back here because today we're talking RV solar. So let's jump right into it. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a long time subscriber, always good to have you back. Just a friendly reminder, I'm giving away $18,000 of tools over the next eight months. And this giveaway ending July 31st is a $4,000 toolbox by Sonic. So check out the link down below for details. But basically leave a comment down below, one comment per video equals an entry. And if you wanna help support the channel, if you go to gastax.com, buy a hat, a shirt, or a hoodie, that is three entries per dollar spent. So let's talk RV solar. So right behind me is my 2021 A model Winnebago 2306. This is a 2306 BHS, it's a bunkhouse model, and I do some extreme weather camping only for winter and spring. Summer is my boating season, but now this thing has been sitting for a while, but it's fully charged and it's ready to go whenever I wanna go on a venture because of my solar system. Now, when I started this project, I knew nothing about RVs. This is my first RV camp or whatever you wanna call it. I also knew nothing about solar panels. So I did a lot of research and really it comes down to, do you uh, want to piece together your own system, which will save you money, or do you want to buy a system that is uh, complete with everything you need that actually costs a bit more? Now, because I was a new to solar, I wanted something that was plug and play, if you will. So I decided to go with Go Power Complete Kit. I'm gonna go over what is included in that kit. So let's jump to that clip so I can show you everything included and then I'll show you how I installed it. Alrighty, here is the Go Power system I went with. It's called the Solar Extreme Charging System, 570 watts. This is what's included in the package. So we have three 190 watt solar panels. Uh, here's some specs on it. Uh, then we have the Bluetooth solar controller. Uh, this basically gets all the power from um, the sun, converts it into 12 volt and then starts charging the batteries. And this is what I have in the basement of the RV. But since it's Bluetooth, I don't actually need to access it at all. And if I do, I can just open my phone. Then you have the three in one inverter charger. Now this is a charger, a converter and an inverter. So I definitely recommend you go with this one. You get it in 2000 watt or 3000 watt. I have the 3000 because it came with this package with more solar panels. Then you get a high uh, fuse with some cables to hook up to the battery, the mounts for the actual solar panels, and then some wire for the actual solar panels themselves. You're gonna need this if you don't have uh, your, your RV pre-wired. So there's a link down below where you can purchase this or if you want more information about it, uh, here is all the information of what actually comes with it be sure to check out the links down below. Now, the next thing I said you needed is the Victron uh, battery monitor. This is the one I have, the BMV712 Smart Bluetooth. And this thing monitors everything and it's also Bluetooth controlled. And uh, this helps, uh, it's more in detail than what you can actually get with the inverter controller on the GoPower. Now, I mentioned I have four of these go power uh, or four of these battle born batteries so as you can see they are pretty pricey $8.99 a piece i have four of these i probably need a two more for winter as well i forgot to mention that but here's a little trick if you want to get these batteries and you want to save some money you should join the escape bees rv program it's $49.95 but a benefit of joining the escape bees program is you get 15% off on battle born batteries. So yes, it costs you 50 bucks to join, but depending on how many batteries you buy, 
you could be saving two, three, four, five hundred dollars with this 15% off. So be sure you join that if you're thinking about buying the Battleborn batteries. And you can also just go there. You'll get discounts on tires, harvest host, and a plethora of things. So that $49 doesn't necessarily need to um, cover all of the, the savings on the Battleborn batteries. But look at this. There's just so many different benefits. So I recommend joining the Escape Peace program. Now, let's get back to me outside with the RV. Alrighty, now that you've seen everything that is included in the Go Power kit, it is not a cheap kit. That kit is about $3,800, depending on where you buy it from. And then I decided to go with four 100 amp hour battle born batteries at about uh, $890 a battery. So this whole set is roughly about $8,000. But now that we got the specs out of the way, the price out of the way, let me show you how and where I installed everything. So I'm going to climb this ladder and show you where it all begins on the roof with the solar panels. Alrighty, so we are on the roof of my 2306 and as you can see there are three panels. Each panel is 190 watts. Now I'm going to tell you, for summer when the sun is up, I think this is fine. For the winter when the, you know less sun in the sky, I'm going to be adding another solar panel, another 190 here. But that requires a lot of work. Um, and I'll go into detail in a bit, but if you can see all of my panels are on tilting brackets I would not recommend these brackets. This ro roof is uh, contoured and those are flat beams and That is kind of a regret of mine So I wouldn't recommend these kind of brackets and to be honest. I'm never in a spot longer than uh, like 48 hours so uh turning the solar panels is actually a waste of time but let me show you luckily on the winnebago micro minis they are solar ready so they come with a plug for the solar panels but that gauge wire goes to the solar controller that can only handle 30 watts of solar and right here is 27 watts so i cannot add another 190 uh, watt panel because of that gauge wire but simply put, I have put all of these together and I've literally just rested the cables on there. I didn't feel the need to secure those cables down. I have over 8,000 miles like this and no problems. Now you may ask what happens if you're not solar ready and you don't have uh, this connection going down into the basement. Lots of people go straight through the fridge vent. So this is the vent when you have a propane fridge. Uh, all the burn off gases come out, out there, but you can actually access that. That's like a, a little chimney, if you will, where you can go down and normally your breaker panel is right by the fridge anyway. So that's another access point. You can put the cables down. But now that you've seen the layout of my panels and you can see I left room for expanding my panels, let's head to the basement to see how it's all hooked up. Alrighty, so here in the basement is where I decided to keep my batteries, my inverter, and then the solar charge controller is right in there. So right in here I have the four 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium batteries from Battleborn. I have my 3000 watt inverter and then I have all my cables going everywhere. I'm actually going to put a diagram in now and I'll walk you through exactly how things are wired because obviously it's hard to tell. But let me go to that clip and I'll come check in with you in a bit. Alrighty guys, I'm going to try explain this how I did it. Please consult uh, your uh, electrician i'm just a youtuber that makes videos for fun uh helping you guys out anyway so here is our rv uh, or our camper trailer now this is how it is wired from the factory you got your your shore power goes straight into your breaker then you have these power cables so this is 120 volts 110 volts whatever we use and then these are 12 volt um, going to charge your battery and also um, power what's in here. So you have a breaker that uh, controls everything 110 volts and then you also have a 12 volt 
a fuse panel in here as well, which controls all your 12 volt accessories, your your power tongue jack, your your lights, uh, certain different things, the water pump, everything is also in here. So you get 120 volt that powers your TV, um, all your outlets, uh, your AC, and then the 12 volt is everything, lights and so on. So inside this box, there's also a charger that charges the battery when you are plugged in. And uh, then if you want to save your battery when you put it in storage, you turn this uh, switch off and it cuts off all 12 volt power to here. And I believe it also turns off your charger, but I could be mistaken there. But that's not the point of the video. Now, when you get into how to hook up the batteries and the inverter, I'm going to show you what I did here. I'll overlap it first, and then I'm going to remove the stock. Okay, so this is how my RV is set up. Now, we got the shore power coming in, and it doesn't go to the panel. It goes all the way into the inverter, and then from there, you go out of the inverter and you go to the exact same place as where it, this wire was originally hooked up. Now it will give this whole panel power. But obviously this can't give power unless we're plugged into shore or if we're plugged in or if we have batteries. So now we still want the batteries to be plugged into the current accessories, the 12 volt accessories in the RV. So instead of connecting to this battery in the front, which I removed, I just made it connect to this battery. But remember that battery monitor I talked about. Here is the battery monitor. All the negatives from these batteries go to the, just go to one side of this battery monitor. Every other negative needs to leave from this side of the terminal. That way, the battery monitor can see the, the power in and power out, and then it can give you all the stats that it needs. So, if you're plugged in, this will go and charge the batteries. This is a three-in-one, so it's an inverter and it's a battery charger and it's a converter. So it will then charge the batteries, and then it will push out power to your panel here. That panel will power on all your 110, 120 volt accessories. If you are not plugged in here, you will have these batteries giving power to the inverter, changing 12 volts to 120 volts, and then pushing power to the panel, giving you power. Now, that's how it looks. Now let's remove this and show you how the actual batteries get their charge. One charges through this when it is plugged into the uh, shore, but the other charges obviously through the panels. So here is the basic gist of how the panel works. So here's the solar panel. It goes into the solar control charger. The solar control charger is in the basement as I explained. You don't really need to touch this thing ever. It is actually just uh, Bluetooth, so you can connect to it with your phone. The positive goes directly to the battery, and then the negative again goes through this battery monitor. And the reason for that is because it needs to know in and out power to the batteries, so it knows how much battery is actually in your batteries, how much charge is in your batteries. Anyways, guys, I hope that helps you understand. These pictures will be downloadable. It's just a simple diagram, um, but it's exactly what I've done, and mine has worked for 8,000 miles. So if you have any questions, leave them below. But let's go back to me at the RV. All right, guys, before we go back to me, this is my actual RV panel. Here's my panel. Here's my fridge, as I mentioned. Uh, panels are normally by the fridge. Anyways, once you remove this this cover here, this is what it looks like. But before you remove this cover, guys, make sure you are not connected to shore power and make sure you are not connected to battery power because this can shock you. Anyways, so the 10 3 wire is talking about there's the black, which is uh, the power, then there's the white, which is neutral, and then there's the green, which is ground. So this is where the power from the inverter comes. 
This is also where the power from shore line will come before you remove it and take it straight to the inverter. So this black wire goes straight to the master panel switch, which gives all of these power. Uh, the neutral goes to the neutral panel here where all the other white cables are. And the green goes to the ground panel here where all the copper wires are. This box here is the the charger for your battery when you have the stock set up. These two uh, cables are connected to this circuit board right here. Remove them and cap them. You don't really need to cap them because it'll be completely removed, but I did and you just tuck them away. And these um, power, neutral and ground are connected in here. You do not, you need to remove those and you just need to tuck them in there. You do not need to use this whole thing once you have your three-in-one inverter installed. So basically, this is all wasted space, unfortunately, but I left it in there in case I ever want to turn this RV back to stock, which I probably never will, but you know, why not? Then this is all ready to go and I can just plug it all back in. So anyways, hopefully that helps. Um, this is the 12 volt panel I was telling you. This is all your lights, uh, your water pumps. This is your 120 volt panel. This is all your power, your outlets, your TV. Anyways, let's get back to me in the RV. So now that you've seen the general layout of the wiring, I'm just gonna give you an exterior view of how the wiring goes. So here is my shore power connection, which is fully functional. What it does, it goes straight from here to the inverter charger that charges the batteries. Then the batteries go back to the inverter and then it supplies power to the whole RV. So this wire goes straight in under the frame. I run it all along this uh, frame underneath, up into this locker and into the inverter charger. From there, I have another wire that goes from the inverter all the way back to right behind the fridge here, up into the frame, into the actual breaker panel. Now that gives the breaker panel power, which gives the whole RV power. Now the power that that is given is only the 120 volt power. Now there is still 12 volt power for everything else in the RV, such as your lights, uh, your furnace, and so on. Now what happens here is I used to, all RVs come with a battery or two batteries up front here and that gives your RV the 12 volt power to run all the 12 volt accessories. Since I removed that battery, I hooked that stuff all the way back to the batteries here, not the inverter charger. Now if we go to this other side, I kept the shutoff for all the 12 volts. So right now the 12 volt, this came stock with my RV, is actually turned on and this is just running all the 12 volt accessories. Now when we come back to this side, there's one accessory that does not come with a go power system, which is a necessity if you wanna know how much power you use. If you look at this connection right here, this is a battery monitor. Every power draw comes off of this battery monitor. That way you can see how much battery you're actually using. So let's go inside the RV and see what it looks like. So here is my panel. This is the battery monitor I was talking about. You can see the battery is at 100%. This is the inverter controller. This actually turns on the inverter so I don't have to go in the basement. So if I turn it on, now everything will have power. The microwave just turned on and so on. So as you can see, I got 14.41 volts. I'm using 0.2 amps right now for whatever lights are on. But if we wanna turn something on, I will turn on the AC. We will see the battery dropping quite a bit. And this is also Bluetooth, which is great. You can open your app and it will show you how many hours of battery or how many hours of power you have with whatever you are using in that current time. So let's turn on the AC, see how quickly the battery percentage drops, look at the app and see how much estimated time while using the AC we can get with my 400 amp hours of lithium battery. Alrighty, AC is on, wonderful. You can see how many amps it's drawing now, 10 amps. 
I'm going to open up the app. Oh, it feels good. And then we can see how much estimated time I can run the AC. Look at that, you see how it peaks. It was at negative 10, now it's at negative 80. So it's using 80 amps of power. My battery is already starting to drop. Here's the Bluetooth app. If I click on it, it just quickly syncs. And it says, you'll see this estimated time is gonna keep dropping crazy because um, we're using all these amps, 90, 90 amps. You see this, this battery drops. So this will get to about two and a half hours it will settle down to. So you can run your AC off the system, but you'll get two hours at most. But that is it. You can see the battery is already dropping and we are at 90 amps of usage. Let's turn the AC off and then I'm gonna show you there, I know it's dark, sorry, is where my breaker panel is. And that's where all the magic happens. So here is my breaker panel. Unfortunately, it is pitch black, but in the breaker panel to the right, there's actually a charger for your batteries. Plugged into shore power, that charger will charge your batteries. You have to disconnect that because you will now have the inverter charger with the Go Power system. You cannot have two chargers. So that is just sitting all disconnected inside there. But my diagram will go into depth of how you can actually wire this system. Now one last thing I want to talk about while we inside the RV and we'll finish up outside is all of the wiring that I've done is pretty intense wiring. So everything here, this connects to the basement. This connects to the basement. Lithium batteries don't like cold, I went to camp. This is a main power switch and this is a battery heater. So this also goes to the basement. The batteries sit on a heater pad. All of this wire goes into the ceiling, down by the fridge, under the basement or under the RV, and then back through the hole into everything connected. That is not a simple task. That alone probably took me 12 hours because I also had to wire all of these. So let's jump outside and summarize everything here. Well guys, there you have it. That is how and where I installed my GoPower 570 watt system. I am gonna be winter camping and fall camping more than anything. So I do believe I need another 190 watt solar panel up top to really get my max performance out of the system with the minimum amount of sun. Now, if you want to buy any of the products I mentioned in here, there's a link down below where I list all the products. Every time you buy from those links, you help support the channel. What I've also put down is a link down below to download those drawings of how I actually wired up the RV. Guys, keep in mind, there's a lot of resources out there on how to do RV solar. I went through all of them, and yes, you can do the system cheaper. A large portion of the cost are the batteries, but since I want to uh, maximize my uh, amperage that I have out of the batteries, I decided to go with the lithium batteries. Is the system the best? Probably not. Is it the easiest to understand if you're new to solar panels? I believe it is, and that's why I chose GoPower. The good thing is everything is GoPower branded except for the battery monitor. But if something were to go wrong, you're dealing with one or two companies at most with warranties instead of hodgepodge mixing everything up. And sometimes when you do a Victron solar panel with a GoPower inverter, the warranty is void. So I decided to stick with all of the same brand because I was new to this and it made things easier. I'm gonna let you know my inverter that I first got was faulty. It's about a $2,000 inverter. So I called up GoPower and they just sent me a new one. So that is why I decided to stick with GoPower. They're a big brand name and it does help with warranty. So guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure you like, subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm going to be doing these style of videos with all of the modifications I've done with the RV. The next video is gonna be talking about how I have nearly 120 gallons of water on board when the stock uh, configuration was only 35 gallons of fresh water. 
So until next time, guys, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you then.